I never thought I would be alive after what just happened to me. My life was normal, like every other 24-year-old, living in a normal house, earning through a normal job. But who can predict the future? I am Emma, and this is my story. I was an only child, and my parents raised me with pure love and care. After moving out, they shifted to New Orleans, and I came to Ohio. My once classmate, Philip Hoffman, helped me to get a job in his brother's advertising agency. I was more than happy the day I got my first paycheck. I rented a small house, turned it into my home with old furniture from a garage sale, and planned to earn a lot of money so I could travel the world. But life rarely goes the way you plan it. I lived in a quiet neighborhood and mostly kept to myself. I'm not much of a talker, and I have always been an introvert since I was in school. The only man I talked to at times was Mr. Prickly, my next door neighbor. After his wife's death, he was living alone in his big house, but he was a kind man. Every morning, while leaving for the office, I would see him sitting on his porch, sipping coffee. He would greet me with a joyful smile, and I'd wave at him while doing the same. This was more or less my usual start to the day. On weekends, I preferred staying home and watching Netflix and eating junk food. At times, I joined my colleagues for a drink at a pub near the highway. So last Friday, when I was leaving for home after finishing work, my colleagues asked me to join them for a drink. Even though I turned them down at first, they kept pestering me. I eventually agreed, having no other option. We all went to the pub, had a couple of drinks, and ate some chicken wings. I was feeling a bit tipsy, and I didn't want to overdo myself. I would have taken a cab, but I remembered I had to pick up some groceries for my weekend self-enjoyment. One of my colleagues dropped me off at a gas station at 11.30 p.m. I planned to do a little shopping from there and walk home, which was no more than five or seven minutes away from there. The only issue was I had to walk amidst the woods. I know it sounds like a bad idea, but I had done this many times before, so I didn't expect any trouble that night either. The man who runs the gas station was also familiar to me. His name was Ralph, and every time I went there to buy groceries, he would always crack a silly joke to make me laugh. I entered the gas station, thinking, here comes another stupid joke, but instead was greeted by a skinny, freaky-looking old woman. She barely had hairs on her head. Because of old age, they seemed to be falling out, exposing her pale, white skull. Her teeth were stained, and her eyes looked gloomy, yet sharp. Good evening. Oh, hi. I was looking around the store in confusion when she spoke again. You weren't expecting someone else, were you? Nothing like that. I always see Ralph, so... Then you must be Emma, right? Yeah. Do we know each other? No, but I have heard quite a lot about you from Ralph. He fell sick, so I'm covering for him tonight. I see. And you are... I'm his mom, Ruby. Feel free to look around and call me if you need help. I smiled awkwardly and grabbed a shopping basket. Something about this woman didn't give me a good vibe. It felt strange that being so old, she was left to look after the gas station at such a late hour. But it was none of my business, so I walked to the shelves and grabbed the things I needed. I could feel her eyes on me the entire time. She was watching me like a hawk. When I finally headed back to the counter, she gave me an ear-to-ear -ear grin and said, Will that be all? Yes. I gave her the basket and she started billing. I was searching my bag for my wallet when she asked me an unexpected question. Are you married? Um, no. So do you wish to marry? Or just fool around. What? What do you mean? You know what I mean, Emma. 
Girls these days are much smarter than in my time. Do your parents know that you're a whore? Excuse me? You don't have to be ashamed of that. You are attractive, and women also have needs. Look, I have no idea why you're saying all this to me, but you should watch your tongue, lady. <laughs> you are one hell of a bitch, Emma. You expect me to respect you when you're trying to take away my son? My only son? The only human being left in my life. How do you sleep at night, Emma? Knowing that you're snatching a son from a sickly old lady. Saying this, she spat on my face and I was completely taken aback by this incident. I stepped back in reflex and disgust and started to wipe my face with my shirt's long sleeve. Are you crazy? Why would I want to take away your son? He's my father's age, you crazy hag. Oh? Then why the hell did he take pictures of you on his phone? Why the hell does he talk about you so much? He is clearly in love with you, and you surely instigated him. My son wouldn't feel this way about you if you hadn't encouraged him, you dirty little slut. I was paralyzed with shock and fear. This woman is completely delusional. She can't even understand the fact that her sick son took pictures of me whenever I came to shop here. I was so terrified that for a second, I couldn't decide which matter I should be focusing on. The fact that Ralph is a creepy stalker or that his mother is a psycho. I was drunk and my head was throbbing from all these sudden revelations. But without wasting any more time, I went to the counter and said, while looking into her hatred burning eyes, to hell with you and to hell with your son, bloody psychos. But I wasn't ready for what came next. As soon as I said that, she lifted a huge chopping knife, which I think she hid all this time, waiting for the right moment, and slammed it on my hand lying over the counter. Even though I tried to move away, I was late. She chopped off my two fingers and I screamed in excruciating pain. As blood poured from my severed hand, she laughed like a maniac. <laughs> now, you'll never be able to wear your wedding ring. You have no ring finger left. <laughs> I could have run away right then and there, and I knew she wouldn't be able to chase me. But something at the back of my mind made me furious, too. I snatched the chopping knife from her hand and cut off her left ear. She screamed like a wounded chicken and fell on the floor while I screamed back. I have no interest in marrying your son or being your daughter-in-law. She kept on screaming and I dialed 911 right away. Even though I survived, Ralph's mom lost a lot of blood and passed on the operation table. The cops found Ralph locked in his room. It seemed that Ralph was in love with me, but his jealous, crazy mother couldn't handle it. She wanted her son to live with her forever. So to take revenge on me, she locked him in his room for a week and came to the gas station every night. I bet she waited for me, expecting one day I would show up. And I did. The cops have enough security camera footage to prove my innocence. My parents have decided to take me away with them after I recover. One thing is for sure. I am never going to another gas station alone in the middle of the night. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If so, please leave a like. And also, a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you want to support this channel and make this channel reach the 1 million mark, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. Three years back when I was 17, I mixed up in bad company. From there, I acquired a habit of doing drugs, anything I could land on. I was living in my late grandmother's apartment, recently dropping out of high school. I was desperately looking for a source of income to suffice my necessities. One night, I think it was around 1 a.m., 
I was going nuts at home because I had no way to get high. I decided to go for a walk to the gas station at the highway and buy a pack of smokes just for something to do. If you don't have personal experience with addiction, this is going to sound crazy to you, but once someone embarks on a mission, they cannot stop. It's like there's a cold fire burning inside you and you have to bury it or you'll die. It's strange, gripping desperation. It's horrible to experience. So, there I was, walking down the stranded highway at 1 a.m. in the morning. Needless to say, I didn't see a single human being the entire time. When I reached the gas station, I saw a small car parked on the side. It wasn't hard to guess that the car belonged to the man who was working as a storekeeper. I entered the gas station and my eyes went straight to the counter. No one was there. The entire gas station was empty. At first, I thought the employee must have gone for a leak, so I started checking out the place. I randomly walked past the shelves when all of a sudden, a face peeked out. Looking for something, boy? Ah, what the hell? Jeez. <laughs> Seems like I scared you. I wasn't expecting someone to come out from the other side of the shelves, so for a second, I almost felt my heart stop. The man had blonde hair, back brushed with a lot of hair gel and crystal blue eyes that looked unsettling in his clean shaved, slightly wrinkled face. He kept staring at me with his glassy blue stare. I somehow got my shit together and said, I, I was looking for a pack of smokes. Okay, feel free to look around. When you're done, meet me at the counter. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> now, the way he said, I'll be waiting for you, was a big red flag to me, and I made up my mind to leave this gas station as quickly as possible. I grabbed a pack of smokes and went to the counter. As soon as he saw me walking towards him, a sick smile surfaced on his face. So have you got what you're looking for? How much is this? Without doing small talk, I jumped to direct business. Receiving such a prompt reply from me, his face got serious. He took the packet in his hand and asked, How old are you? Um, I'm turning 18 next month. Why? You know I can't sell you these, as you're officially not an adult yet. I couldn't believe it. Is he giving me this age crap in the middle of a highway for buying a pack of cigarettes? My irritation crossed the limit, and I said, Dude, I can get many more of these things without turning 18. This is just a pack of smokes. So enough with your stupid nonsense. You don't care to respect people, do you? Seriously, it's 1.30 in the morning. Who cares if I smoke a pack? Just do your job, man. Why are you screaming at me? I'm talking to you calmly. Then stop annoying me and just take the money, bro. Fine. I will sell you this. Thanks a lot. But only on one condition. What? What the hell is wrong with you? You have to do something for me. <laughs> I was beyond furious, but at the same time, my withdrawals were making me paranoid. I needed to smoke and divert my mind, so I thought I should be on board with this creep. I was also aware of the fact that if he doesn't sell me those cigarettes, then I'll have to wait till morning, and there's no way I was going to do that. What is it I have to do? You have to kiss me on the cheek. What? Have you totally lost it? Look. I'm a very lonely man, so kiss me on the cheek and take your cigarette in return. I won't even charge you for the packing. What say? I can't explain how I was feeling that moment, but I started to scratch my arm to calm myself down. If you're familiar with the effects of withdrawal, this is what druggies do when they can't get high. The man looked at me up and down and said, So, have you made the decision? Now, what I'm about to say might sound completely disgusting to you, but like I said, I wasn't in the right state of mind. I thought, well, it's just a kiss on the cheek. I mean, if he wanted, he could have asked me to do more, but he just asked for a kiss on the cheek. I looked around with a nervous face. There's no one else, so no one will know. Then I noticed the security camera above the entrance. I'll, I'll do it. But you have to turn off the security camera. I can do that. 
Sure. His filthy fingers, covered in dirt, wiggled on the keyboard and the red beeping light on the security camera went off in the next few seconds. He then turned at me and grinned ear to ear. Come close. It's time. <laughs> I was breaking inside. I could realize what addiction has done to me for a pack of cigarettes. I'm letting a creepy old man abuse me, but I had no way back. I was in deep shit. I slowly leaned on the counter, and the man raised his right cheek for me to kiss. I knew the more I linger on this, the more difficult it would be to do. So in one swift motion, I went to kiss his cheek, and that's when he pulled out a bizarre stunt. Just when my lips were about to touch his cheek, he turned his face to me and made me kiss his filthy lips. It happened so quickly that I couldn't move away. His gooey saliva got stamped on my lips and I vomited on the floor. <laughs> You're worse than a girl, <laughs> bloody moron. <laughs> Vomiting over a kiss to the lips. <laughs> he went on insulting me while I was letting my stomach out. Tears rolled down my cheek, realizing I have lost my self-worth. The man blew more kisses in the air, staring at me and went on laughing in between. His crazy behavior was beyond explanation. <laughs> Look how that little Barbie is crying now. <laughs> what happened, Barbie? <laughs> you lose your pony? <laughs> I just couldn't take it anymore. I threw a punch, aiming at his eye. He didn't see that coming, so my strong punch knocked him on his cheekbone. Even though my knuckles got hurt, I didn't stop. I threw the second punch on his nose, and the lower portion broke spitting blood all over his clothes. I could see the nose being thrashed with my one punch. Oh, you jerk, you broke my nose! The man grabbed his bleeding nose and started cursing me. I quickly snatched the packet of cigarettes from the counter and ran as fast as I could. His painful scream kept echoing behind me. <laughs> I'll call the cops. I'll tell them you tried to rob the store. After injuring me, I'll end this incident. Don't you dare think you're gonna get away with this! Ah! But I didn't stop. I ran and ran, and his voice slowly faded away. I didn't sleep the entire night after getting home. One thing I was pretty sure, that he had no evidence against me. So even if he goes to the cops and claims that I was robbing him, he won't have any footage to prove that. On the contrary, the cops will be suspicious of him for turning off the security camera all of a sudden. So I was safe on that front. After that incident, I stopped doing drugs forever. I joined a rehab group, and now I'm working in a garage to pay my bills and live a clean life. And to the crazy man at the gas station, I hope we never meet again. My name is Robert Gray, and I used to be a truck driver a few years ago. At the time, I was recently given a new job to transport some goods. Now, this new job often kept me on the road late at night, as there were back-to-back -back deliveries, and my route was mostly on the outskirts of town. Due to being on the road most of the time, I often found myself stopping for gas. One particular night, I stopped at a strange gas station called Anderson & Sons Gas Station. I got down, put the pump in, and went into the gas station store. As I walked into the store, I felt a chill go down my spine as something didn't feel right. For starters, there were about five people in the store, and they all sported black trench coats. That wasn't the only strange thing that I noticed, as they all hung their heads low, so I couldn't make out their faces. When I walked up to the cashier, who was also sporting something similar, the man said something very strange to me. Howdy there, friend. Would you like some dog soup? Shocked, I looked at the man with a baffled expression. To be honest, what bothered me wasn't the weird statement. No, what bothered me was the fact that the man was still saying it in this day and age. You see, the term dog soup was a popular slang used in the 1930s for a glass of water. And the only reason why I knew what it meant was because my grandfather used to say it all the time when I was a kid. After a few minutes of silence, I replied by saying, No, thank you. After the short, weird conversation, I continued to browse through the store. 
I then decided to get a chilled beer to drink later when I got home from work. As I took it to the counter to pay, the cashier said, You're driving, ain't you? You better not get scrooched. I had a bewildered look on my face as another odd 90s slang term was used because the term scrooched meant drunk. I was beginning to get scared now as I had an uneasy feeling. So I replied to him, No, just pack it up for me. I'd like to go now. I could tell the cashier knew that I felt uneasy as it was written all over my face that I didn't want to keep talking to him. So he said, No need to get all uptight, friend. I'm just bumping gums. And for the third time in a row, another odd 90 slang popped out of his mouth as the phrase bumping gums meant making small talk. Alarmed now, I quickly took the bag and left. On my way out of the store, I wondered why the cashier was speaking like he was living in the past, as I was not sure many people would understand him in this day and age. And the only reason why I could understand him was because I was very close to my grandfather as a kid, so I picked up most of the 90s slangs growing up, as I used to love watching old movies and having long conversations with my granddad. I racked my brain for an answer to my question, but after a while, I decided to brush it off. So I entered my truck and continued on with the trip. I managed to deliver the goods in the next four hours that followed, and after everything was settled, I started making my way home. It was 2 a.m. now, and I noticed the truck was running out of gas again. I drove for a while before I came across another gas station. As I drove closer to the gas station, I had a weird feeling as the place looked a bit familiar. It was dark, and I wanted to get a better view, so I looked outside my truck's window to make out the name of the gas station, and before I could say anything, I froze, because staring right back at me were the words Anderson & Sons Gas Station. For a moment there, I thought I was hallucinating, as I was sure that the location of the Anderson & Sons Gas Station was still a thousand miles away from here. I was scared, so I didn't get out, and I decided to find another one. So I started the truck and drove for about 30 minutes before coming across the same gas station, Anderson and Sons, that I had just left behind. I started to freak out as I thought my mind was playing tricks on me, but I calmed myself down and proceeded to drive in. Everything in my body told me to leave, but the gas tank was extremely low and I knew the truck wouldn't last long enough to find another gas station. In order to calm my mind, I told myself that they must be a chain gas station, which would logically explain the numerous locations. So I got down from the truck and I started filling the tank. Thirsty, I decided to go into the store to get a bottle of water. And as I walked into the building, I couldn't speak as my skin went white. Right in front of me were the exact same five people I had seen at the first gas station over eight hours ago as they all donned the same black trench coats and their heads were all hung low. It seemed like some sort of sick deja vu as my mind couldn't comprehend what was going on. I racked my brain for an answer, but there was no logical reason as to why I was in the same exact gas station at a completely different location. My mouth started to stutter the words, No, 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 as I slowly began to back out of the store. As I walked with my back towards the exit, I accidentally bumped into one of the people wearing the black trench coats, and as the man rose his head to apologize to me, I screamed. It is extremely difficult to describe, but the man's morbid face was a charred skull with pieces of burnt flesh dangling off of it. No words could describe the fear and horror I felt as all five of them now faced me, and each of them had the same ghastly appearance. With no hesitation, I bolted out of the door and ran towards my truck. I threw the gas pump on the floor and I rode at full speed all the way to the nearest police station. When I got there, I immediately rushed in, screaming, and the two cops came out to calm me down. They asked me what was wrong, so I began to tell them everything that happened that night. When I was done, they looked at me with a perplexed look and told me that I must be tired, which would explain why I was seeing things. I then firmly said that I was sure of what I saw. 
So in order to calm me down, the cops decided to pull a file on the Anderson & Sons gas station enterprises, but after their research, they had a shocked look on their faces, as the gas station called Anderson & Sons hadn't been operational since the year 1934. The file stated that there had been a horrible accident that same year as one of their stations blew up in a terrible fire, killing only five people who were present at the scene, and apparently the aftermath and repercussions of the sad incident put them out of business for good. With nothing left to tell, I stood up and left the police station without saying another word. The next day, when I dropped the truck back at work, the on-site inspector who normally inspected the trucks asked, How'd you make it home without gas? Appalled by the strange question, I asked, What are you talking about, sir? I'm pretty sure that I filled up the tank twice yesterday night. The inspector then replied to me, Well, that's impossible, Robert, because the gas tank is completely empty and the truck shouldn't have been running. With no feasible way to answer him, I simply kept my mouth shut and walked away. The incident seriously took a toll on my mental health, and after a few weeks, in order to attain peace of mind, I decided to do some personal research on the strange gas station. After a few hours of reading through articles and documents, I came across a similar story online. Apparently, it happened about 30 years ago, in the year 1991, as an old truck driver also claimed to have visited the Anderson & Sons gas station. The story was exactly similar to mine, but the old man ended his own experience with, no one needed to tell me as I already knew that those poor souls were stuck here, doomed to appear and assist anyone looking for gas in the dead of the night. <laughs>